Hey guys. Alright, I'm going to be doing a video today uh, demonstrating the difference between games on iOS uh, using a iPod Touch 5th generation, uh, which uh, is universally known to have the same internals as the I, uh, iPhone 4S with the uh, A5 processor. I believe it's a little bit underclocked, may have um, an 800 megahertz processor as opposed to the gig on the uh, actual 4S, but in, in any case, on the tests that have been done, it's about on par with the 4S, except it's sporting a five, uh, iPhone 5 4-inch display, uh, same retina resolution, same viewing angles, it's basically identical uh, to the iPhone 5 display with 4S internals, so it's a pretty zippy device, uh, runs games just as well as the 4S would. Um, and I just wanted to demonstrate how games uh, run on this device as opposed to how games run on this device right here, which is the Nexus 4. As you know, the Nexus 4 is a quad-core, uh, runs a quad-core processor with 2 gigs of RAM. Running Android Jelly Bean, I currently have CM10 on it, whereas this device is running stock iOS 6, no jailbreak or anything of that nature. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this test is because there's a lot of misconceptions that Android uh, isn't on par with, with uh, the iPhone or iOS in terms of games, and I beg to differ. Uh, and there's a few reasons why. First thing first, a few years back, I discovered a website called Gameloft. Uh, now, before Gameloft was posting games in the Play Store, what they did was they allowed you to actually go to Gameloft.com, uh, recognize the device that you were using, and let you download, whether they were free or pay, free or pay apps, uh, games that were actually compatible with your specific Android device. Now, uh, they actually have all of their games at the within the actual Play Store. So, uh, yes, while the exclusive games do certainly most of the time end up on iOS first, uh, that's not to say that they don't ever end up on Android or that Android doesn't have a few of their own uh, killer, killer titles. So I'll go ahead and get started with a game called uh, Subway Surf. Now, again, remember, you're running a dual core on this, you're running a quad core on this, but you'll have people tell you that the benchmarks uh, on a dual core uh, iPhone are better than a quad core Android uh, just because they believe of the, the, the whole misconception of fluidity etc uh, and just to point that out real quick do you see a difference in fluidity I don't believe me uh, both are just as smooth as one another and in many cases I can say uh, that uh, the, the Nexus is a slightly more fluid and uh, that's because Jelly Bean is running on it and Jelly Bean has implemented what's called Project Butter so you're going to get that buttery smoothness and uh, everything's going to be instant to your touch. I mean, you can see, watch, let me create a folder here. I'll go ahead and just create a folder, open that folder, open the browser, exit the browser, and I'm out. Um, and then I'll take the Play Store out and I'll put it back to wherever it needs to go. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and just test speeds of opening the web browsers here on both devices. Oops, I didn't open the browser here on Android accidentally. So let me go ahead and close out of that. Let's close out of this and let's go ahead and open both browsers. Okay. All right, you can see they were both pretty identical, but here's the difference. Now look what happens when I exit both browsers. See how much quicker it was on the Nexus? The Nexus just instantly exited out of that. Uh, same with settings. If I go to settings, okay, almost about the same, but when I exit out, all right, let's try that again here. When I exit out, it's instant on the Nexus. So, uh, you know, subtle differences, but they're differences. Now, on to the games. All right, we're going to go ahead and open Subway Surf. Let's see, where do I have Subway Surf here? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open it at the same time. Great game, by the way, in case you haven't downloaded it yet. All right, on the right, we have the Nexus. On the left, we have the iPod 5, fifth generation. Alright, so it's, it opened first on the Nexus. Let's close this ad here. Alright, so you can already see, frame rate wise, the Nexus murders uh, the iPod. And remember, this is the iPod is equivalent to a 4S. Let me turn the volume down here. The iPod's equivalent to a 4S in terms of the internals, or at least that's what they say. But notice the frame rate differences here. You can see it's choppy. It's choppy on the uh, it's choppy on the iPod, whereas it's 
buttery smooth on the quad core nexus. I mean, instant to my touch. You can see, you know, instant to my touch. Um, now let me go ahead and demonstrate that again on the iPod. Again, uh, the, take the iPod as a 4S because that's what the internals are, except it's running on a 5-inch uh, Retina display or 4-inch Retina display that you see on the iPhone 5. And you can see it's slightly more choppy, slightly uh, less frame rates uh, running on this. And it's just not as pleasurable to play, in my opinion, uh, when you've got uh, something running as smooth as this. And even the, the, the graphics, the graphics on the Nexus are so much more smoother, uh, you can tell that, that the rendering is smoother on uh, the trains and on the, uh, you know, the, uh, the rails and the features and, and the characters. Everything just kind of renders more smoothly. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. But in my opinion, it definitely runs better on the Nexus uh, Nexus 4. Not to say it's not playable on, on the iPod or an iPhone 4S, but it runs better on a Nexus 4. Uh, and again, I'm doing this test because I've heard people say that, oh, well, the 4S, you know, benchmarks better than a quad-core Android, and Android lags, and, you know, this, that. No, Android doesn't lag, and no, the 4S in real-life benchmarks, I don't care what kind of nerdy benchmarks you're using, in real life, it does not uh, outdo the Nexus. So let's go ahead and exit this again. Immediate on the Android, uh, quicker than uh, it was on the uh, 5G. So let's go ahead and close these apps out. Make sure that we got all this closed out, okay? And now we're gonna do a test with, uh, we're gonna do a test with another game, and that game is gonna be Doodle Jump. So let's, where's Doodle Jump here? There's Doodle Jump, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and open Doodle Jump on both devices, okay? Alright, so the iPod definitely started that first, even with the advertisement. Now let's go to play. This is about equal. Uh, I'm going to say this is about equal. Let's try it with the volume turned up on both devices slightly. Alright, let's do that again. This is about equal, but the uh, I, I have more fun playing it on a larger screen. Uh, it gives you more screen real estate to see where you're going, to see what uh, platforms you're going to land on, whereas with even a 4-inch display, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely not as pleasurable, in my opinion, although Doodle Jump is, is perfectly fine to play on an iPhone or an iPod. Absolutely no doubt about that. All right, so let's go ahead and lose here. And let's exit out of both and see which exits first. As you can see again, the Nexus One. All right, so we're going to close out. We're going to close out. All right, next we're going to go ahead and test. Let's see what else is there. Pitfall. Let's do Pitfall. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open Pitfall on both devices. I have a little hard time here trying to turn this sideways. Let's just keep it like this for now. Oops, I exited out. In any case, we're going to go ahead and open Pitfall here on both devices. Advertisement. Alright, top is Nexus 4, bottom is iPod 5th generation. Again, same internals as the 4S with a five screen. All right, and just looking at it, again, it looks smoother on the four, on the four, uh, on the Nexus 4. It looks smoother, it looks like everything is more rounded, uh, whereas, uh, the, you know, it, it, I don't know if you can tell by just looking at it, but um, it just looks cleaner. So let's go ahead and, and start here and start here. Both are pretty equal. I will say the colors are a bit brighter on the iPod. Definitely a bit brighter on the iPod. Uh, it has better contrast. Um, the iPod has better contrast, definitely. Better viewing angles. Um, you can't see that in, in real life. But uh, it's, it's, ve it's very playable on both devices. 
Uh, Pitfall is one of those games where I will definitely concede that it, it, it runs just as good on an iPod 5G as it does on a quad-core Nexus 4. Let's go ahead and exit out of both of these. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at... All right, let's go ahead and see what, what else do we have here. In terms of comparisons, we got Clay Jam. Let's do Clay Jam as the last comparison, and then I'm going to do separate games um, for both devices. So Clay Jam looks like it opened up on the iPod first, but it's loading on the Nexus. Um, about identical. I think the Nexus won that by a hair. Let's go ahead and play them. Here is the Nexus. This is the iPod 5th generation. Again, 4S internals, A5 chip, dual core versus a quad core S4 chip. All right, it looks like the iPod opened that first, but both games started at the same time. Again, the colors, the contrast is a bit better on the iPod, um, but uh, just looking at it in real life, you wouldn't be able to tell a the difference. They're both running about identical uh, in terms of frame rates and speeds. They both look very, very similar. So uh, this one has to be a draw in my opinion. Uh, the Nexus opened up some, it opened the game faster, but the uh, iPod actually started the game faster. So it's, it's, it's a tie on this one, definitely. And that's impressive for a dual core A5. That's impressive to beat the, the quad core in that sense. All right, let's go ahead and exit out. Alright, it looks like the iPod exited that first. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a few games that people uh, always boast about being on uh, iOS that isn't on Android. And that one game, or one specific game, I'm going to look at is NBA 2K13. Oops, I opened Pitfall. NBA 2K13, there we go. Alright, now this is a killer title that uh, that was on the iPhone for a while. Uh, I, I believe you had at the time NBA Elite and NBA 2K12, and now 2, 2K13 is out uh, for uh, Android. I know there's some S3 users on Verizon who are having a hard time finding it in the Play Store, but... Uh, this is a game that I had to buy because it was one of the games that I that I the reason one of the reasons why I had an iPhone was for this game. I don't play handheld, you know, devices. Let's just quick game here. Uh, and you can see graphics-wise, it's uh, right there with you know, any other top device. Um, I mean, it's almost like you're playing on a Dreamcast. Uh, the quad core runs it very, very well, very fast. Uh, good frame rates, good graphics. Um, now, you gotta, now Wade's got to play defense. Right, so. yeah, but this is this is awesome. I mean, to be able to play this on a, on a phone is very, very awesome. I, I can't get enough of that, you know. Let's give it back to LeBron. for LeBron, and LeBron's going to shoot a long three, and he's going to make it, and that's going to be a 2K, we're going to go ahead and close out of that, okay, and another game that I want to go ahead and showcase to you guys would be Street Fighter 4, another game that was only exclusively on iOS until recently, Again, it's hard to find on the Play Store, but you can go ahead and find this on uh, on certain websites that <laughs> I'm not going to name right now, but there are websites where you can Street find this game. Download the APK. But here's Street Fighter 4. Again, it was once a game that was exclusively on iOS, but you now actually get to play on Android. So let's just do a tournament here. I'm going to pick my guy Guile, okay, OG Guile, I'm going to fight Zangief, why is Zangief always the first guy to fight, 
Poor Zangief, shortchanging him. Great frame rate, fast, everything works fine. Sonic Boom him. It looks good. Uh, plays well, it's fast. You know, no lag whatsoever. Quick to my touch. Uh, it's perfect. Perfect in my opinion. Um, it actually plays better than the one that I had on my iPhone 4S. Uh, that's, I'm not making that up. It's true. It looks better. It plays better. I'm going to close out of this. Okay, so let's see. Next up, here's an exclusive title for Android uh, that is not on iOS. I know the first one was, but Part 2 currently isn't, or at least the last time I checked it wasn't, and that's Exus 2. Uh, now, this is a kind of a rail-type game, but... All right, let's just see what this installation is. While this is doing this installation, let's go ahead and look at some games. Oh, look, it gives you like a little punk to play while it's installing. Let's go ahead and look at some other uh, games here on... Uh, iOS. So, you know, you got the regular, the cut the ropes, which again, you got on Android. You got Pitfall again, Samurai 2, you got on Android. Uh, you don't have Mirror's Edge, that, Mirror's Edge that's an iOS uh, only app. Uh, you don't have Stick Wars, which I wish we had Stick Wars, but we don't. Uh, Devil May Cry, that's really cool, even though it's not retina capable. Of course, you have Fragger on Android. Um, you know, you got Temple Jump on Android. You got GSM Casino on Android. You have Jewels on Android, Stupid Zombies, and Doodle Jump. Um, so, in terms of games, yes, there are some great games on iOS, but let's not shortchange Android. Uh, they have just as many uh, great games themselves. So, don't feel shortchanged when you're purchasing an Android thinking, oh, well, the iPhone has all the games. Well, that's not true. Um, let's go ahead and continue here. Let's play the game. Let me show you guys Exodus. This is a really cool game. Great graphics. Great graphics. All right, so let's see. Alright, look at that, it's kind of like a transformer type deal. Now you can either move your device around, or you can use a joystick, I prefer the joystick. You're basically just beating the hell out of these robots that are trying to kill you. Fun game, I like it. Great, great graphics. Again, think Dreamcast, we got a Dreamcast type deal here. Looks good, runs good. Just a good game. You download this from the Play Store. Exclusive Android game. Kind of like a rail shooter, though. You can't just go wherever you want. So we're going to close out of that. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the Play Store, you know, for those who aren't aware. Uh, just in case you want to look at the rest of the games that I have. I have Doodle uh, Army, Temple Run, Zombie Highway. Again, all, all uh, games that were on iOS or exclusive on iOS that are now on Android. So you can go into the Play Store and you could search GTA and you actually now have the option of either downloading Grand Theft Auto 3 or you can download uh, Vice City. There's also Vice City, which is the original port from the PS2, so you can download Vice City as well. Uh, there's also Max Payne. You can download Max Payne, which is a fantastic game, fantastic port, great graphics. Um, and you can always go to GameLoft.com, and what that what it'll do is when you go to GameLoft.com, there, let me show you. So when you go to GameLoft.com, it'll actually give you a uh, mobile, uh, it usually it'll take you to a mobile site, but it'll give you a list of games that are compatible with your device. So again, that's GameLoft.com. Again, Batman is another game that you can download for Android. Um, Sonic Jump is an awesome game. Uh, <coughs> the Expendables, Walking Mars. Uh, that now Walking Mars was a game that on iOS I loved, uh, and when I found out that it was finally on Android, I was ecstatic. Uh, this is another great game. Great graphics, great engine, uh, fluidity, everything about it. The originality of it. Uh, it's, it's basically a guy who's going around Mars and searching for things and and uh, looking for plantation and life and whatnot. Walking Mars is a very fun game. It, it's an adventure. Uh, there's a lot. There's you know tactics in it that you got to go through and certain things that you got to do to get through the next to next areas and next levels. But it's quite worth it. It's it's not too long of a game, but it's quite fun. Uh, I would suggest looking into Walking Mars. It's a very fun game. All right, now if you guys have any other questions uh, or if you guys have any concerns about 
any other games that are that's on the iPhone that's not on Android, uh, let me know and I'll find you a duplicate game or a similar type game to it. Because look, both devices have their pluses and minuses. Now, one misconception is always has always been the lag. Hey, I have no lag on my phone. Guess what? I don't. You can sit there and cry about lag all you want. I have no lag. So if you're going to leave a stupid troll comment saying your phone lags, well, no, it doesn't. You're an idiot. So I have no lag. And no, the iPhone doesn't have lag either, never has. But that's that's been its selling point because it's a grid of icons. I can't take this icon here and move it here because it'll just jump it right back. But guess what? I want to take my calendar icon. I want to move it here. I could. You know, that's the difference. It, it, it gives you the, 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 the capability to be able to customize your device in ways that you may not think is important, but it gives you that ability, the freedom. Uh, now, I'm not trying to, you know, crap on iOS. I like iOS. I always generally own an iOS device, iPad, iPhone, etc., iPod. Uh, but in this case, now in 2013, uh, those misconceptions are all but gone. Um, and I just wanted to showcase that in the form of games. I'll be doing more of these videos in, on, in different ways to showcase different aspects of each device. Otherwise, if you have any questions, concerns, or any uh, requests for any games that you want me to go ahead and look at, let me know. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.